Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Today's lecture is about performance of digital modulation techniques over wireless channels. We have seen the <coughs> sorry, we have seen the performance of digital modulation techniques, but today we look at the performance over wireless channels. Credit for some slides. Some slides are adapted from Professor Hank. So basically, if you look at the bit error rate as function of signal to noise ratio or the uh, bit energy you find out that the performance as you increase the energy per bit <coughs> the error goes down and in the case of additive white gaussian noise the performance depending on the modulation techniques was like a waterfall when we go on to wireless channels we will see that the performance degrades dramatically and it takes a linear care for the improvement and we might be losing as much as 17.2 db and that's about 52 times to get the same energy you need 52 times the signal energy so what is there and what causes this changes we'll look at this performance in this lecture so if you want to follow the coverage of andre goldsmith book in chapter 6 we have covered the performance of digital uh, modulation we started with 6.1 we have covered in our previous videos the performance of our awg and channels and today we'll look at fading outage probability average probability of error we'll look at combined outage uh, average probability there are some topics which are delayed for future courses advanced courses so to summarize the objective we have three things at the end of this lecture you must be able to define and compute the outage probability to meet specific requirements so outage probability the second item in the list is to be able to define and compute the average error probability we have outage probability and then we have average error probability and finally you need to understand the meaning of irreducible error fall caused by doubler effect which is seen in dpsk differential phase shift keying so let's focus first on the two with a combined metric and then we'll see the double effect lot later on for baseband communication we will assume that the transmitted signal or has a bandwidth of b we'll use a baseband communication and the idea can be extended for passband communication for now the signal is made the digital signal is made of some of different pulses that are delayed so t is, is a symbol duration and k is a counter so we we have a first pulse second pulse and this is we have multiple delays and every one of them is going to be scaled by a factor a k so the scale is different from one to another the received signal will be this u of t and there will be noise added to it so r of t is equal to u of t plus the added noise not here i'm just using the same color so the power spectral density of the noise in node over 2, the double sided power spectral density will be real uh, dimension, will be just constant in the case of additive white Gaussian noise channel. The receiver will process the signal and we will be using matched filter and we'll use uh, synchronized samples. So, at that case, we will have the output samples will be proportional to the energy in that signal and this factor ak which which is shown here so we have square root of energy of the amplitude will be square root of es and then we have the noise added noise is complex noise with zero mean and a note as a variance now uh, we have the following few items to explain we have the signal to noise ratio for the analog at the analog domain and the analog version the signal to noise ratio snr will be the received power divided by the noise power and the noise power will be n node times b because n node is the power spectral density watts per hertz so we need to multiply by that bandwidth to get the signal to noise ratio so how much power received and how much power in the noise note that the bandwidth of course is inversely proportional to the time duration of the symbol so if you want higher data rate then you require more bandwidth we can also think of the signal to noise ratio as a digital version of that okay you can relate here that you know that um, if you replace p with one over ts uh, you will find that the time goes up and then 
PR times T, you know that energy is a power um, related to time. So if you substitute here for the bandwidth, you'll find that we can we can think of the signal to noise ratio in terms of energy in the signal divided by N naught. So either you have the power, then you have the bandwidth explicit, or the energy, and you have N naught. The signal to noise ratio per bit is different than the signal to noise ratio per symbol, of course. Keeping in your mind that every symbol is log base 2 of m, where m is the number of symbols in this number of alphabets in this modulation technique. So the energy in the symbol, we'll use gamma to represent the signal to noise ratio. So gamma is our notation, m is gamma sub s, which is equal to energy per symbol divided by n naught. If you want to look at the gamma per bit, if it's binary, they will be the same. And if it's not binary, then eb equal to as divided by log base 2 of m. So we have signal to noise ratio per symbol and signal to noise ratio per bit. Note that here the performance of the modulation format will depend on the signal to noise ratio, or will depend on the power, okay, will depend on the following factor how much is capital M? It will also depend on um, the modulation techniques, and it will also uh, depend on the energy we put per bit. In the case, this is for the case of symbol error rate. If you want, if you want to discuss a symbol error rate, will depend on the power on the signal, m mod and gamma b. And for the case of the bit error rate, you will add to this the mapping, because we have gamma b mod and m. Remember that gamma is was used before for the bat loss constant, and now we are using it as a signal to noise ratio. So don't get confused. Here is an example. The performance, the performance here is uh, we're showing the example uh, of the M array phase shift keying, and of course this is an eight array phase shift keying. And the spacing between the, the symbols, of course, will be 2 by divided by m, where capital M is the number of symbols. In our case here, it's 8. So you get 2 by divided by 8, you get 8, uh, over, four, uh, you get 8 over 4, which is 45 degrees here. This is the spacing. Uh, without showing the details here, we have studied the performance of this uh, this uh, system, which is uh, 8 Ari uh, or m, m Ari PSK. And we came up with the expression for case m equal to 2 for case m equal to 4, case for m greater than 4. So we have different um, expressions for, for the performance. We have done also this for the PSK and QAM. And we have approximated the performance as function of the signal to noise ratio in all cases ES over N0. Remember that for the case of uh, PSK and QAM, with gray coding, we can reduce, we can relate the power, uh, the bit error rate with the I mean the probability of bit error compared with the probability of symbol error and we divide by log 2 base m assuming that every single error will almost result in one bit in error. If you want to use MATLAB for the calculation I'm just giving you a hint that there is a function in MATLAB called qfunc. qfunc you just substitute the coefficient and you get the value of the q function. There's also the error function and error function complementary ERFC. We can do the same. We can have approximation symbols and bit error probabilities for all coherent type of modulations. Coherent type means we assume that we have perfect synchronization in terms of the carrier. And we have here the modulation technique. We have probability of symbol error as function of the signal, uh, to, uh, I mean, symbol uh, SNR. And we have here the probability of bit error. So sometimes you can easily relate them. Of course, in the case of binary, it's just the same, so we are not repeating it. It takes a while to come up with all these expressions, but we now, we're not going to stop here. We have done this in previous courses, maybe. We want to extend this to wireless communication for fading channels, not just uh, look at this expression as function of signal to noise ratio, because now we know the signal to noise ratio in fading channels and AWG in channels and so on. So let's take it from there. Performance and flat fading. What you see on the right here is a plot of the received power, we're looking here at the plot of the received power in dB relative to the root mean square value. So if we are getting zero, we're getting the root mean square value and we can get above or below. The received power fluctuate as function of time. So the X axis is the time axis. We're seeing here one second, for example. 
the, ch the channel is changing with respect to time if we are transmitting symbols so and this duration of the symbol is relatively small compared with the coherence time of the channel then this symbol for example here will feel like a constant value of the channel because the time duration of the symbol is relatively is relatively small you could be lucky and get a good channel like in this case or you could be unlucky and you get a bad channel like in this example at 0.4 at almost 0.4 seconds so if the time of the symbol is relatively very small you either get something good or something that's not good if your channel have a coherence time which is comparable to the symbol time or the symbol time is comparable to the coherence time of the channel then the effect of the amplitude will be averaged out and the other extreme is that if your channel if your um, symbol duration is much less than the coherence time and of course there will be a lot of variations inside uh, the one sample that's uh, the other extreme case so we'll consider some of these cases as we go on and we will model the received signal as a channel effect on the on the transmitted signal so c of t represents the channel and then we have u of t which is the which is the transmitted symbol and we have also noise the performance measures we're going to use of course there's it's not the multiplication uh, relation but we assume that the impact of the channel is a multiplicative effect here in addition to to the noise so how do we evaluate these three cases we have different performance measures the first one is called outage probability we're going to define a threshold which is the minimum required for communication you know what type of application you have and then you find the minimum required channel threshold level of power that you accept so if the received signal to noise ratio is below this threshold we say that we have outage we cannot communicate if we are here 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 we are having outage so finding this probability finding the probability here where your received signal to noise ratio is less than the threshold will give you the outage probability you, of course you want the outage probability to be very small ideally zero then we can also look at the average probability for example in this case it's not that you're going to not communicate usually you're going to communicate because you'll have partially of strong and partially weak channel but then it will average out and you need to find the average error probability so we look at the we look at the transmit we, we, this is the probability of error for the case of identified gaussian noise and then within the symbol we will take we'll consider all possible values of of the signal to noise ratio because it could average it could be up or down so it goes up and goes down so we need to average out so two measures is the outage probability or the average error probability now we can also combine one and two together and come up with something another measure like achieving a certain probability of error for some fraction of time or space so you can say for example i would like to see what's the probability of of getting uh, above let's say minus 70 dbm for 90 percent of the time or 99 percent of the time so we can combine the two measures together now um, based on this i'm linking here with the color you can see that we have if the symbol time is much less than the coherence time usually our measure will be the outage probability because you either get it or you don't get it now if the symbol time is much greater than the coherence time like this yellow case then the fading effect will average out and it's not covered here and finally if the symbol time is uh, going to be equal like the green i'm cutting again again so that it can match we can use different techniques to improve the, the system and uh, the right measure would be the average error probability to improve the first one the first case to get out of this outage you need to control the power increase the transmitter power and to get um, usually improve 
the average error probability, we can also use techniques like diversity, which we're going to cover, inshallah. For the case of um, performance in frequency selective fading, which affects different parts, this is what we're seeing the time here. If you want to consider frequency selective fading, then we'll need to, to consider equalization in FDM, and we'll see how much we can do that in that. There are three different notions for power and signal to noise ratio. Okay, let's start with the power. So if you only consider the path loss, then you get a constant value, which is function of distance. We refer to this PR double bar. So because this is a constant, it is related only to the path loss. Now, if you take this value, which is noted here in red, and you add to it a log normally distributed uh, number, we get the received power, the received average power, with which includes the shadowing effect. So the shadowing effect is a Gaussian, is a normal distribution with average equal to the one we got from path loss and variance sigma psi squared in dB. Or alternatively, you can take this constant, which is the average value, and add to it a normally distributed variable would mean equal to zero. Now, if you take this value from the shadowing and you add to it to the multipath effect, if you take this random value and you add to it to the multipath effect, you get PR shown in blue, which includes also, also path loss, shadowing, and multipath, which is usually modeled as Rayleigh. If modeled as Rayleigh, you take this random value, you multiply it by a randomly generated exponential variable, you take one value, and you get the received power. Of course, uh, if you get this randomly generated uh, random variable, it would be an equivalent to an exponentially distributed random variable with coefficient 1 over br, where the mean here is, uh, uh, the mean is uh, br bar. So basically, we have three levels. The average value, which is b double r. Let's start from the other way around. We have the power is the received value. If you average over all multipath components, you get PR in green, bar. If you average the shadowing effect, you get only the multipath effect, which is P double bar. So we have three levels of averaging. Okay, so that's also shown here that as the green PR bar is the average of PR and PR double prime double bar is the, is the expected value of PR. That's all in dB. Similar to the power received power notion, we can have the signal-to-noise ratio as signal-to-noise ratio instantaneous, average, and double average. So this includes everything. This does not include um, the sh this does not include the multipath, and this does not include the shadowing. This is just the path loss. Okay, we can see this here in the following two diagrams here. Um, so this is uh, gamma double bar, which is the average value. If you generate a Gaussian distribution on that, and you pick the value, this will give you the distribution of signal to noise ratio bar. If you take the value from here and scale it by an exponential, you get an exponential distribution with its average as a sigma a signal to noise ratio bar, and that will give you an instantaneous. So you can start with double bar and then bar and then the instantaneous value. So that's the three different notions of power and signal to noise ratio.